Welcome back to Game Development with Pi Game. This is part five of our tile-based game project. And in this video, we're going to get started with the player graphics and start planning ahead for some of the gameplay features that we will be making in the next coming weeks. In the last video, we made our map scrollable and made it so that we can create a map that's much bigger than the screen area and move around on it. And that allows us to do things like, for example, I made this little uh, map that has a maze. So we got a maze here that you can try and find your way through. Um, but one thing about this is you can sure see a whole lot of the maze at once. So what we could do, and I think I'm going to do, is go over here to my settings and make my tile size 64 so the tiles will be much larger and then things are going to be more like this right and so we have much more of a feeling of exploration right we can only see a limited part of the screen at a time and of course this is a maze so there's only one route through it so that's not really ideal so I also have this other map Oops, I'll go over here That's that I saved that's actually, this map is taken from a level um, from the classic arcade game Gauntlet. And so it's a nice map that you can run around in and has all sorts of different rooms and things. Um, but one thing that you might notice, depending on how you've laid out your map, is that it can be very hard to navigate through smaller openings. Like if you leave a one tile gap, for example, say there was a, a power up in here that I wanted to pick up. It's really hard to get down into that little hole because my sprite is the exact same size. There we go. But it was difficult, right? The, the sprite is the exact same size as a tile. So there's no leeway there. So we probably want our player sprite to be at least slightly smaller than the size of the tile. And we could do that. We could adjust the size of the square. But first, um, before we do that, or instead of doing that, uh, I'm going to start talking about how we're going to put together the graphics of this game, uh, starting with the player sprite. So the first thing that I want to do before we change the graphics around and start working on improving the movement and the controls is I want to go over here to our player sprite and change some of this code to start using vectors instead of individual variables like we're doing here. Uh, we've talked about vectors before. Vectors are very useful for lots of things and you're going to see as we go into this project, um, some of the things that I have in mind are going to be a lot easier to do with vectors than they're going to be with individual variables and having to do the trigonometry that's involved with finding angles of things and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And you'll see how that goes as we go on. But so I'm going to load this Pygame vector class and I'm going to use that for a lot of my variables in my player and especially right here we're going to have we're just going to have a velocity vector instead of the x and vy and we're going to have a position vector instead of this individual x and y so this is going to be the x and the y times tile size and then we don't need those so i've replaced four variables with just two right but that means we've got to go down here and we've got to clean up all of these things so i'm going to duplicate this line let's move that uh, down to here and for the movement we're just going to change these to be uh, the velocity.x or the velocity.y is what we're going to set to the speeds and also these and which means oops 
which means we can go over here and in this triangle, or I mean, sorry, in the diagonal fix, we can change this to just multiplying the velocity times 0.7071. Now we're also going to have to fix the update here. And we're just going to say that self.pause, we just add the velocity to that. instead of that and then we don't need to do that and then we just move our rectangle is equal to each of our positions okay simplifies that a little bit and finally we got to do that in the uh, colliding here so this is going to be velocity x velocity x velocity y y and y so we're going to be using velocity in all these places, and everywhere we had self.x and self.y, uh, we're going to use the position instead. So there, 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 uh, there, and there. These are all going to be position. Okay, and that I think is everything we need to change. Okay, there we go. So we're back to where we want were before. We're still moving around. Now we can start talking about what kind of graphics we want to use for this uh, player sprite. So I spent some time looking through Open Game Art and trying out some different options that were there. And uh, because I want to stick to uh, freely licensed, um, you know, non copyrighted imagery, um, I went back to our old friend Kenny and I found this, which is Kenny's top-down shooter pack. It has lots of great tiles that we're going to be able to use to lay out our game environment and a bunch of different sprites for good and bad guys to do all sorts of different things with. Um, so we're going to make a this, we're going to use this art, so this is going to be a top-down game. Of course, most of the code we write will work just the same as if we were doing a um, kind of Zelda-style side view, which really is a top-down game. You just draw the sprites with a slight uh, side perspective, but the, the movement and everything is going to work pretty much the same. Um, okay, so this is what the our pet look, looks like. So we're going to use one of these sprites for our player to start with, and we'll get to the rest of it uh, as we get a chance. Um, here's a little preview um, of some a mock-up of how the art goes together. Looks really nice. You can do all sorts of different rooms and environments, uh, outdoor and indoor. And we've got some cool looking little zombies that can chase you around. Okay, so so we're going to use the little uh, picture of one of the, the characters for our player sprite, right? And so that's easy enough to start with. We just need to load that and use it in our sprite class instead of the rectangle. So I'm going to go over here to our load data and I'm going to load the player image. Oh, and by the way, we did add an image folder to put all this stuff in. So we're going to add that. That's wherever our game folder is, and it's called just called IMG. So that's where our stuff is going to live. So we're going to load, join that image folder with, it's called uh, man... You know what I'm gonna do is we're gonna we're just gonna create some variables for this stuff because we're gonna have a lot of new settings for the player. So let's go over here to our our player settings and we're gonna say the player image is going to be and it's called man blue. Let me double check the name. 
underscore gun dot png. So that's the picture we want to use. So we load it in the loading section of our game. And in our sprite, we can just use that here for our image. Player image. And we don't want to fill it with yellow. And that is all we need to do to get the image in there. All right? so there's my character. So that's easy enough. Um, we still have the wall collision. We have the rectangle being drawn around the sprite, as you can see. And that all works fine, except, of course, we don't always want to be facing to the right like this. Right? That doesn't really work. Uh, I, want, I need to be able to turn in all the directions. And that is where we're going to have to make a decision, a big decision here on how the gameplay is going to work. Okay, and the big decision that we're going to have to make here is what kind of movement do we want to allow? Now we could, let's say we were sticking to four-way movement, up, down, left, right, no diagonals, right? Then we need to have the sprite turn, right, like this, and face in the direction that we need it to point. And that means that you can only shoot in those directions, which makes it kind of hard when something is, you know, in a diagonal direction to you. Which means, do we have eight positions and we rotate, you know, in between those? Um, if you've ever played a game that allows you, like this, that allows you to do diagonal shooting, you have to hold down the two arrow keys and you're moving in that direction while you're shooting in that direction. Um, it gets pretty, it gets pretty tricky. Our other option is to allow free movement. Right, you can turn at any angle and face in any direction, and I like that a little better. So that's what we're going to do. I can see now that we've already gone over a little, a little over twelve minutes. So we're going to do that in the next video. I don't want to make this this video too long. So uh, at this point, you should have gotten prepared. We're, we have our vectors in place for all of, all of our location and velocity, and you have the player image in place. If you've decided to use some different art, just pick something that will work for uh, you know top-down movement and something that will look okay when you rotate it to face in all directions. Um, I recommend you stick with the, the Kenny Game art pack, it's a really nice pack because it's got a you know complete set of art and the link to it will be below in the comments and you can go and get that and be ready for the next video where we start talking about rotating our player sprite and all of the things that are going to come along with that and a couple of things that we will run into will be a little tricky to solve. So we've got that to look forward to, so I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.